All right guys, and for this lesson we are going to be working with color pencil and I just have like a basic 12 pack here. If you have more options at home, then obviously you can use those. But we are, for this exercise, we are going to stay away from using black for shading. So we're just gonna stick that over to the side and we'll just use these colors that we have here. There's a lot of information about color theory and understanding how light works, whether it's natural sunlight versus artificial light. But for this exercise, we're just gonna assume that we are working with natural sunlight, okay, which is a warm. All right, so we're gonna start this exercise by making a smaller version of value scales than what we've normally been doing. So I'm going to line zero of my ruler up with the edge of the paper and measure down one inch just to get off the edge of the page. And then we're going to measure down every half inch. So here's one, and right in the middle of one and two, that's the half inch. Okay, so you have one, one and a half. Make a tick mark at two, make a tick mark at two and a half. A tick mark at three, and a tick mark at three and a half. And a tick mark at four, all right? Then we're gonna come over to the other side of the page. Again, line zero of your ruler up with the edge of the paper. Make a tick mark at one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, and four. All right. Now, let's start with red, and it's complementary color is what we're going to use to make it appear darker. So complementary color to red on the color wheel is the color wheel that is directly across from it. Okay, so that would be red. Instead of using black to make red darker, we're going to use the green. So we are going to go from medium to light, and we want this mid-tone the center of our value scale should be the pure hue, okay? So just, oop, the solid color will be right there, all right? So if this is our shadow base, basically, we're gonna go from a medium green. Now remember, when you're shading, with, especially with colored pencils, you wanna be shading in like an ellipse shape or like an oval, and you're gonna be overlapping it and you're gonna be going in different directions as well. So this is my first pass, and I know you guys can't really see it, but I am shading in kind of very long circle shapes, and that's gonna that's what's giving me like the soft texture of the paper and allowing that part to show through. Okay, so I'm going from medium to very very light in the middle or close to the middle. Okay, again, remember, this is gonna be pure red. All right, so once we have our medium green down, and I might wanna make that just a little bit darker. There we go. All right, we're gonna go in with the red. And you're gonna press as hard as you can without breaking the pencil. Okay, but you do wanna apply a solid pressure. And again, I am going in circles. And I'll go in two different directions just to make sure I get a good, solid, even coverage there. You guys can already see how it started to darken up right here. I'm still pressing as hard as I can because I want this middle section, again, just to be pure red. I don't want any green. And I don't want any white to show through. I just want to press as hard as I can and get that pure color down onto the paper. All right, now once I've got the middle section done, then I can start to lighten it up towards white. Okay, so this is more of like your traditional value scale that you guys have created several times over now. You're just gonna to start to ease up on your pressure until you get a nice smooth transition to a light red, very light red, 
and then an almost white coat. So you can either leave it like that and it kind of creates a soft texture for your color pencil or you can take white and you can use it to kind of help blend and almost burnish uh, your color pencil. It kind of blends it a little bit more, adds more of like a waxy tone to these lighter areas especially. Now, if we want to create green, a green value scale, we're going to do the exact opposite. So we're going to start with red. Um, I'll start with this true red. Um, and you're going to create a medium value of red. And remember, you're shading it until you get to about the middle point. Now once I have that done, I'm going to take my green and I'm going to press again as hard as you can until you get to the middle section. All right. Again, you want to make sure that you go from pure color to white and then you can pick up your white color pencil again. So you can see there is green and the reason we are using complementary colors instead of black is because if you take black a lot of times you'll end up with like this muddy color that's just not as rich as the colors you get with the complementary colors. Okay, it kind of muddies it up a little bit as opposed to up here where it's just a richer, less saturated uh, color there. Okay, so we've got red and green. Uh, let's choose two more complementary colors. We can do blue and its complement is orange. So we'll go ahead and write that down. And then we've got purple and yellow. All right. So let's go ahead and start with blue and we're going to lay down the orange first. So now you have your value scales. What we're gonna do next is just draw ourselves a box. Um, this is just creating a frame for a sphere. So we're gonna take something that's flat and get, make it look three-dimensional using these value scales that we have here. Then you can just draw your circle. So we're just going to draw in the middle. All right, once you have your basic shape down, go ahead and throw a horizon line in there. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be straight across all the time. It can be maybe more in an angle. That would have been a good spot to use my ruler. All right, and then I'm just gonna erase this line a little bit. Just so when I'm starting to color, I don't pick up the lead pencil marks. Okay, so I'm gonna say I have an orange sphere or ball here. So, in order to shade it, I need, let's see, we're going to say that there's a light source coming from over here. Let's say this is the sun. Nice, pretty sun. Bright, warm light coming from over there, okay? So, in my sphere, 
I'm going to have an area of highlight. Now I'm just tracing this in yellow because I don't want it to show up too much, but I want you guys to be able to see it on the video. Um, and then as I'm shading, I'm going to cr be creating a mid-tone, a core shadow, and a reflected highlight here. And all of those are going to kind of follow the cross contours of this sphere. And hopefully you guys remember the cross contours from the last lesson are going to curve around the sphere to show that it's going back into the distance, okay? Let's go ahead and start shading. Um, we want our mid-tone, which is gonna be like right around here, to be the orange, because that's our base, okay, our base color. So I'm just gonna shade in kind of like a crescent moon shape, just to start giving some indications of where all these colors are gonna be. Now we can bring in some of this yellow to show that, that warm sunlight is hitting this ball or this sphere right there and adding quite a bit of that nice warm yellow. We can influence that highlight a little bit. All right, bring the yellow down into the orange just a bit. Bring the orange up into the yellow. Again, just working on blending. You don't want hard lines like right here. You don't want those hard lines in your rendering. But, okay, when we're getting into the core shadow here, we're gonna reference our value scale. So if the ball is orange, then we need to use blue as the base for that shadow. All right, so again, I'm gonna start with just a medium. You can start light, but you're gonna apply about a medium blue here. And you're not going all the way to the edge because when an object hits the surface of a table, especially if it's something like white, um, you're gonna get light that reflects off of that white surface and onto your object. And that's called the reflected highlight. So we're not gonna go all the way to the edge of that ball. We're gonna get close, but not quite all the way. So we'll just leave that little bit right there, untouched for now. So now we can take our orange again, and remember, we're gonna apply as dark and as hard as possible on this darker shadowed area right here. All right, and it's gonna fade up to where that blue stops. Again, I'm leaving a little bit of space right there for that reflected highlight. So here, this is where my core, my mid-tone is. So I definitely want to press as hard as I can again so I get this pure orange color right in this middle area where my base is. And as you get closer to that highlighted area, that's when you can start to again fade it to your white and eventually blend it in with that yellow. So that's a little bit of like a hard line right here, so I'm going to try to blend that out just a bit. Soften it up, because I don't like those hard lines in mine. All right, so we've got all the coloring done for the most part, but you might notice that this looks a little bit 
off right down here as well. So this is where the reflected light is coming in from, ball. So we're gonna make it a very light orange, because the ball is still orange, it's just having a little bit of extra light hit it. All right. So we'll just leave it like that. We can blend it in with the core shadow there. Okay. Let's just go ahead and use like a, another complementary color to the orange. And we'll just do this so that you guys can see that there is a surface there, so there's going to be a cast shadow. Let's go ahead and draw our cast shadow. So this is a yellow green and the way that cast shadows work is that you have to think about this this is the object that is blocking this sunlight okay and again the sunlight is warm so it's a warm yellow so the cast shadow is going to be a cooler more neutral value than what's here as well as darker so if we think about that this is a yellow green so a cooler version of that would be a blue-green, right? And then to neutralize it, we can add like a red-orange. A lot of people will just go ahead and color this in gray, but that's not correct. Okay, if you look at the shadow of a tree on grass, the grass doesn't turn gray. It's just a less saturated color of green. So let's go ahead and create a blue green with red orange kind of mixed in. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the orange. All right, and then we'll take our green. We'll press as hard as we can. That is our sphere looking three dimensional with a cast shadow, a reflected highlight, the core shadow, the base or the midtone, and then the highlight.